Well, hello, people, and welcome back to part 86 of Organ Bay, our vanilla City Skylines build. I hope you're having a wonderful day. Thank you so much for enjoying the redevelopment of Hergen last episode. Uh, this is a really unique area of the downtown now, isn't it? And uh, you guys are always happy to see redevelopment, so expect some more in the future. It will allow us to keep the series going a little bit longer, and hopefully allow us to achieve the goal of using most of, if not all, of the unique buildings that we have available in the game. However, in today's episode, what we are going to do is actually return over to Denise, I think, because we're going to be doing, I guess, what is the final of the service industry builds. And this is going to be the water treatment plant, so I think against the bends of the rivers of Denise would be a good spot for it here, kind of out in this section. Uh, close to the space launch facility, of course. And I think this would also be kind of, you know, a good bit of local industry where a lot of people in Greater Denise could end up working. Meat and potatoes of today's build um, is really working with the ultimate uh, recycling plant. This is a big monument, and definitely something I want to factor in. So let's prepare our space and then we'll get a building. Fantastic. So this should give us enough room to work with. So let's first of all create an entrance into the facility. So of course with any kind of service industry build, they always gravitate toward uh, the industrial roads from the interest DLC. And let's just run this on a 90 degree angle uh, right the way through the middle of the facility. And let's now eye up where we want our monument to sit. So this thing is a behemoth. It's also very expensive as well. It's Eight grand a week, <laughs> which we compare that to some of the other garbage processing options. It's significantly more expensive. I reckon what we can do is once we've placed this down, is we can probably remove some of the other garbage processing in the city. But let's take a look at it first. Now this thing is a really nice asset, actually, isn't it? I do like it. Now it's also got a logo on the front of it as well, Green Power. Uh, let's go ahead and see if we can move the sun around again. Oh, there we go. Let's just keep it at the same time. We'll just move the longitude. There we go. So I think seeing the logo here would be pretty important just from like a brand awareness kind of perspective, but you also see what this building does as well. And this is definitely one of the better monuments, I think, because it's going to produce power for us as well. And it's also much more realistic looking because some of the other ones are a little bit ridiculous, <laughs> especially things like the Eden Project. Uh, they're very kind of sci-fi looking almost. So we'll have this here. Um, it has a massive garbage processing capacity. So having just said that, I reckon now let's pop on our garbage view. And I mean, let's play the game first. Is this value adjusted? There we go. Now it has. So it's very high. So we could, I'll probably keep all the local recycling centers because these are all doing a job for kind of the local area. Um, let's have a look. Downtown doesn't really have too many. Again, that's local recycling center. Same over there as well. I think I'm most inclined to remove this here. The waste processing uh, complex that is part of Sharon's waterfront. Maybe this could actually be an area for redevelopment. Maybe we can rework some of the old brick buildings into kind of condos and whatnot and rework a little bit of this design around here with the trains. Might be a fun redevelopment episode. So with that in mind, we are actually going to remove this waste processing complex from Orchid Bay's garbage processing facility because I don't think it's really needed anymore, is it? Cool. So I think I want to bring this a little bit closer. I think let's go for maybe here and then we can start to create a bit of a frame around the rest of the build and um, so even though this is garbage processing the whole point of today's build is to actually build a water treatment center for orchid bay because it doesn't currently have one uh, which i guess also means we can remove some sewage industry from city as well which we'll do in a second let's decide on our asset selection first uh, so eco inland is um friendly to the environment as is the eco treatment plant as well now we we rarely use these these assets here it is going to throw I mean what, what's its pollution rate zero apparently so I guess we could chuck it into the rivers of Orchid Bay 
How close can we get these together, these assets? Yeah, they're very much snapping to the shoreline, aren't they? If we were to just place two of them in, how do we feel about that as part of the general infrastructure, I wonder? I don't hate it. And it actually blends quite nicely with the um, monument as well, doesn't it? Although I'm now thinking I can kind of see how I want this to develop. So let's do a little bit of terraforming and I think we'll make a bit of an inlet for these water treatment ponds to actually sit on. So let's terraform into the sea or the river rather and we'll go for out there I reckon. And let's have this run parallel with the recycling tank. What's this actually called? Ultimate recycling plant. <laughs> there we go. I'm, I'm going to misname the asset a thousand times today's episode I'm sure. Uh, we'll obviously rebuild this here as a bridge as well, uh, once we have it in. And I want to straighten this off as well, really. Something along those sorts of lines, I think, is what I'm after. We'll do it here as well. So this way, we can kind of blend in the uh, treatment plants nearby to the uh, recycling plant. I think it might be quite a good combination of assets. Uh, having just mentioned that we can now probably remove uh, some sewage assets that were placed uh, in the early part of the city. Definitely over here. And this one can go, as can this one. Causing quite a lot of pollution for this part of the city. Uh, and then let's double check anything over here. Water towers there. It's all pumps over there, isn't it? Uh, there's not a massive amount of water treatment knocking about in the city, I think. Yeah, removing those two buildings is actually taking two off, which is okay. Uh, Karen's factory is supposed to happen there. They're part of the build, as is with the case with Shellshank Prison as well. So I think that's probably all the water treatment facility we need to remove. Uh, so I think I'd like to key this as well. Why don't we go ahead and grab... Uh, do we want to grab a... Maybe a seawall fenceless for this might be potentially a good shout. It's not overly designed, is it? Yeah, it's kind of like a brick lock, isn't it? I think we can get away with that. We'll keep this going to there. And I am aware we have destroyed uh, the bridge here, or the road rather. Let's go ahead and reinstate that while we're remembering it. He's going to go across in one straight piece. You are, for the most part, I think. I think I can live with that anyway. And let's just straighten up our terrain edges. And then we can... Finish off some key work. Let's come off the guideline here. Cool. So that should do for a little basin. Now let's go ahead now and grab uh, the eco water treatment plant. I guess we can have one here. Then we can have another one there, I think. A bit experimental, this, but I want to see what we can do with the water treatment plant, because we haven't done one for so long, really. I don't think since Ilos we've done a water treatment plant, have we? Because Nessie doesn't have one yet, either. So it has been a while. Especially in Vanilla, too, which you're going back to Nubioke for that. And I can't remember if Nubioke had a water treatment plant. You guys will have to remind me if it did. Cool, so that's a lot of sewage, <laughs> which is fine. Oh, look at those little conveyor belts as well. What an underrated asset. I don't think we've ever placed this one down, have we? I don't think we have. Oh, would you look at that? It's flooding Greater Denise as well. How terrible. Greater Denise <laughs> is being flooded with sewage, which is fine. It's fine. So it, it, it is stabilizing, but it's a little bit kind of tidal isn't it so maybe we just do one i think two is just too much water input for that to handle i think okay <laughs> yeah i think i think we'll go with that it's a little more sensible isn't it it's fine so let's return to water treatment assets of course and um, tank reservoirs are always a real um kind of distinctive feature of these water treatment plants for me i think so i definitely like to get some of those included um, alongside some actual water treatment as well so there's the Inland Advanced and then the Eco Advanced, and they're two pretty 
kind of distinctive assets here. I think if we're going down the eco route, because this whole area is pretty eco friendly, isn't it? I think we best go with the eco plants, haven't we? So let's go with that. Now let's see if we can kind of expand this facility here. Um, they're kind of using similar style fence there, aren't they? So I'm, I'm pretty happy with that positioning, to be honest. I think that's quite nice. And then let's save a little pile of space. And this way we can run some pathways between our assets to give that sense of kind of wider facility, if you like. So we'll have that there, and then we'll feed this one down here. We don't really have any industry demand at the minute, but uh, I wouldn't mind including the occasional block. I think we'll zone up some spaces and just see what develops. We do usually get an occasional spike, so we'll see what happens with it. Well, I'm happy with that there, I think. Let's go ahead and box this in with our industrial road. That should be quite nice. So how is that leaving us for sewage treatment capacity now? Doing pretty well. We're doing all right. Uh, I can't imagine the city's going to expand much further to start eating into this deficit, so we should be okay. Or oh, surplus, rather, isn't it? It's not a deficit. But then I think we'll start placing some tank reservoirs here. And then we'll get these running in a configuration. How much are these to upkeep? 720 a week. They're not super cheap, but not massively expensive either. Uh, can that build on water? Are you okay? I think so. I think these take spare water, don't they? So the tank reservoir is a water reservoir. If the city pumps more water than it needs, the excess is stored in these tanks. Cool. So... We should be careful about this, because I have seen this happen before. Where it almost siphons too much water. How are we doing for water budget? Do we reduce that at all? No, we're on 100%. We should be alright. But, uh, it's as you can see, those water tanks have now siphoned off everyone's water, which is slightly irritating. Uh, let's see if we can... Let's just place a water tower down here. Does that help? Some of the warnings are fading. There we go. Now they go. Just have to wait for it to kick in. So if you are going to place the water reservoirs, do be careful with them because they can siphon off the entire city's water supply. <laughs> Which is obviously not a good thing. So do be careful with them because you can sit here building and turn around and see your entire city abandoned behind you. So just be careful with these assets. I almost think I don't want the road against the back of them. Just because they have these little buildings here. Um, I reckon we'll feed some more of those pathways down toward them, just so it looks like workers at the plant would have access into those. Cool. And then we can just have that one go down there, I think. Subtle change, but it helps kind of add a, a sub-building into the mix, doesn't it? Like creating these little alleyways in the facility now. Uh, hopefully the airport aprons should go in here as well. It should allow us to create some Larger concrete space, not quite there, it doesn't, which is a little bit irritating. It's weird, isn't it, how it collides with some things and then doesn't with others. But uh, we can't place them here to fill in those spaces, so we absolutely will. I reckon also we can fill in certain squares, doesn't it? You just gotta get the orientation right. There we go. I think that's a little bit better, isn't it? And the last asset we have here is pumping service. Again, it is quite a water treatmenty looking asset if that's a phrase I can coin and I think just because this one has the water exposal on the back of it I'm probably going to have this partnered with my tank reservoirs I think yeah something like that and then we can bring our paths around it to box in that facility there as well Let's get some parking down as well. I wouldn't mind a little bit of parking up at the front of the facility for any workers here. Uh, so let's do one here. And that should probably be enough, to be honest. I'm actually inclined actually to use probably the Japanese parking, I think, here, rather than the vanilla one. I think just because it's a little more industrial looking, isn't it? So let's go with this one then. So we'll have that there. I'll place this again. This comes with the Railroads of Japan content creator pack if you are missing it. 
Uh, I guess we could do another couple of blocks there, couldn't we? Yeah, although you do get this really annoying tearing sometimes with it. I guess you could sort of treat it like it's just one concrete, but if you do have move it, it's just a case of changing the elevation, but obviously in vanilla, you don't really have that choice. But uh, happy to have some park in there, I think. It's quite tasteful, isn't it? Uh, that's quite annoying, though. <laughs> that, is, that is not how water works. You okay? wonder if that's just the um, being too close to the key that's causing that. Well, it could be a terraform issue, I suppose. Push the water back. Do you get any happier? How about if we sink the terrain a little underneath? It's sort of helping, actually. Touch more. Yeah. Yeah, that, that kind of fixes it, really, doesn't it? Yeah. Uh, speaking of railroads of Japan, I reckon one of the little office branches would also work quite nicely next door to uh, the wastewater treatment pond here. Just as a little bit of uh, sort of administration, if you like. But to bring this down here, can we get an airport apron in without annoying anyone? And do it there. Up to about there, I think, is not bad, actually. I'm pretty happy with that. And then let's go off of our grid snap in here while we're near a key. Never happy with it. Cool. And then let's place that Real World Japan office branch here. Just so it looks like there's a little bit of admin here next to this building, I think. Maybe even go for two of these, actually, if you want to create a bit more of a substantial facility, I guess. These do collide with each other as well, which does allow or some vanilla building fuse actually. Yeah, I think that just expands the treatment pumps, doesn't it? Don't mind that at all. We've definitely got that kind of water treatment vibe here as well, haven't we? I also wouldn't mind having another entrance into the facility this side either, I don't think. And perhaps a little security booth up at the top here as well. Probably something from... The career pack. I reckon that should probably do it, actually. We can actually delete the road there and it will remain connected, won't it? Which is actually rather nice. And we can bring the pathway around the front of it and kind of feed that off into the wider facility where we've got all the other pathways all linking together. I'm telling those sorts of lines. Bit of an entrance booth there where you can check in or whatnot, or you know, just a bit of a reception for the facility, if you like. Now another little common feature we often see with water treatment plants, little kind of open pools of water. I'm not entirely sure what they're used for, but I reckon we can recreate them pretty authentically with some water outlets. So I'll tell you what, actually, before we terraform, let's actually create the frames with dirt roads. So That's probably going to be a little better. So let's just bring it off of this axis and let's see if we can come behind the reservoir here. So at this point, I'd almost like to reroute the road into the um, base center here, I think. And I want this space to work with, so why don't we remove this road? And then we'll instead have it travel around the back. Let's also just chisel away a little more of this hill. Like that. And then we'll come out from here. Cool. This opens up this entire area here to be worked with. So let's return to that idea. Let's have our boxes come down this way. So let's do 200 by 200. That should probably work. And then we'll do a gap of 60 in between each of them. I think this should work. And then we'll disconnect each of them there as well. And then again, we'll save that same distance here, so we'll do 60, and then 200. So let's work with 3, I think it should be a good start. So we'll have a little bit of terraforming, and I guess really we want them to... ...kind of flow into the water, because if we don't, then they're going to fill up and flow in vanilla, because they're not water sources. 
Which is a little bit of a shame, but I'm sure we can work around it. So, let's pin all this off here. Push it all back. There we go, there's actual logs in <laughs> the, the orchid bay. There is treatment plants, which is wonderful, isn't it? Uh, so the thought process here is to have, I guess we can crack open uh, the frames now just to reveal these little pits. And then if we have uh, the fresh water outlets here, which should start throwing out fresh water any minute. And then this here is going to have to flow into the river, which is fine. But it's just more water treatment facility and capacity, isn't it? Which is really what we want to try and achieve in vanilla, I think. Although you... Are you okay, water outlet? You're not actually pushing anything out. I wonder if that's because... I mean, do these... Now, that is interesting. So the freshwater outlet only lets out excess water in the system. I wonder if the tank reservoirs are taking all the excess water, leaving none for the fresh water outlets. We actually need to check if that's happening, because otherwise our other water sources are all going to dry up. Like the one in the golf course. Or maybe these will be okay, because they were placed before the tank reservoirs were. That's the only reason that I can think as to why that's happening. But we'll roll with it. And in fact, if anything... Oh no, there you go. <laughs> there you go. As I say it, and try and maybe work around it, it fixes itself, of course. Cool, let's crack this one open too. And then hopefully we can get a similar position in there. Which does actually help with the um, access to the paths down here, doesn't it? And then we'll break this open as well and see if we can do something similar here. We'll probably extend that path network out here as well. And of course, we'll have to open the outlets here for the river as well. Uh, lots of rock walls here. Going out of these same time lapse will be a big help, I think. So we'll get involved in some of them. But until then, let's push this out into the water. Keep it on a small brush, actually. I want to maintain some of the shape at least. Something like that. And possibly even upgrade these as well. I don't think I want to lose the ones on the side. I think we'll leave them in. It kind of helps just chisel out the edge of the water a little bit better there, doesn't it? But uh, I guess we'll see. We'll see how it develops. And I wouldn't also mind some warehouses here. Um, do we have a unique factory nearby? Is there one in the space center? So we can launch a ro another rocket. Maybe we'll do that on the next live stream. Yeah, there isn't a factory over here, is there? But there is one, of course, in the car factory, which does require metals. And we've got the one in the lemonade factory over here, which wants glass and crops. I wouldn't mind also including some warehouses. Especially the small ones, just because when they fill up, they look like they're full of kind of tools or spare parts. Yeah, these ones here, the warehouse yards. Why don't we do... Three of them here. And then we'll set them to store things that local factories need. Not that that's an immediate connection over there anyway. Maybe we want to explore a road connection here actually. I think that might be a sensible idea. And what's the elevation like on this train line? It does swoop up and over, doesn't it? Okay, well, let's do that then. Before we move into that detailing time lapse, let's see if we can expand some regional networks around. I don't suppose I'd be against a rail crossing here. We are kind of out in the country, and it's not an overly busy train line either, that one. Um, although I hate that bridge, that has to be said. Let's recorrect this. I think we'll take the curve on the land before we approach the river. Mm, do we need the suspension arch? It's a little bit overkill, isn't it? But it's okay. I think I can live with it. Let's have that one there. And then we can just have this go straight the way through. Although we will need to slope here a little bit. Now let's go from this point here. 
a more slow boat through this valley and just create a bit of a, a channel for that road to follow. Something like that. I think this way it just allows people to access the industrial sides of Denise without having to either remain on the dual carriageway back up to Karen and Sharon through here or to actually go through Denise itself. It's just going to be a quicker access route for them, I think. So, happy to expand some of the rural networks here. Bring him through this way. And then what did we do over here? It's a little asymmetrical pattern over this way, wasn't it? Um, I wouldn't mind repeating that, actually. So let's trim back a little bit of this fence. And then we'll do that same pattern again. So let's grab some asymmetrical red. If we can find it. There we go. We'll do one there. And then one there. And then we can spin that around. Cool. And that should hopefully do the job for us. Fabulous. And then we can just rework all the tree linings and the connections around here to make it a bit more authentic. And possibly a little a little back road here into Denise as well. Just um off of the suburb. I don't want this to take too much traffic off of the entrance road into Denise though, so we'll see how it performs. Also unzone that house there too. Yes, yeah, so we'll see how that does. And yeah, probably a little bit of um, asymmetrical action will help here too. Let's uh, have this one here as asymmetrical. And we do have asymmetrical highway, don't we? We do indeed. Why don't we have these sections here as asymmetry just to give that turning lane into Denise if they want to take it. Or they can go straight on, of course. And uh, I guess we could actually keep this going all the way down here, couldn't we? And switch the asymmetry here. That way they have the turn away then if they want to go straight on uh, or turn right back onto the dual carriageway system. Oh yes, wonderful. There goes all our flooding trucks. That's great news, isn't it? They're already making use of that connection from the uh, treatment plant over here. Very happy to see that. That should also allow those materials to get back to the car factory a little better, for which we want to store glass and plastic in the other ones as well. So we'll do that here while we're here. Wonderful, but a pretty small facility with a lot of detailing to do and some new networks to blend into the area as well. Otherwise, let's detail some actual VCs in City Skylines and then we'll be right back.
Okay, guys, let's have a little detail review, shall we? So there's another sort of industrial complex out near Denise now. This part of the map is really starting to develop quite a few of them, isn't it? We've got the FA Synergies project, uh, the car factory, of course, and the space launch center. And it's really chiseled out the riverbanks, isn't it? Yeah, so we'll come in to, tell you what, let's start over by the networks. So we've done all those tree lines in, and this relief road now, as you can see, as we just sit and watch it for a little bit here, it's actually taking quite a bit of traffic off of the dual carriageway. Uh, before people get into the roundabout, of course, which is the primary entrance into Denise. So, a few people coming and going here. So, this relief road has been um, a much welcome addition, I think. And then we'll come down here where it snakes through the forest. Uh, before we arrive at the train bridge, the rail crossing here was starting to back up a little bit. So, I thought we'd best just preempt this and decided to embank the train line since it's already on a hill against the road. So, an embankment here, I think, made the most sense. And then this comes back down now into Denise eventually. And before we arrive over here, where the whole water treatment facility has been boxed in with some of that industrial fence. And I love the orientation here of the monument of the green power. And um, it really is kind of the same process. I don't know why I'm so obsessed with this in CS1. And we'll do the same thing over here. The same thing with the Wood Vision factory. There's something about having a logo facing onto a main road. I don't know, maybe it's like my old career in brand management. <laughs> Just having that exposure to vast amounts of traffic is something I like to factor into a build for some reason and I hope it kind of pays off with the realism there. So, favourite bit of the build is the logo. <laughs> really like that on the monument. Uh, fencing and overgrowth all the way around the riverbanks as you can see. And then our little admin area here for the uh, treatment plant is all boxed in uh, with fencing and overgrowth around the edge of it. I did draw in a little district to get in some industrial evolution just so we can have some prop work in around the space to get this kind of stuff knocking about which I think is pretty important for and builds like this. I've also introduced the geothermal plant. I was just kind of scanning for more assets to include and then we haven't included the geothermal plant in Orchid Bay at all obviously because we're not playing in the snowfall theme but in our effort to use at least every asset at least once we have now ticked off the geothermal plant. And I think because we've also got the garbage process in here as well, I think maybe we can come from the idea as the fact that, you know, this isn't just a water treatment facility. It's actually almost kind of treating water and creating biomass off the back of that with this plant over here. How believable or realistic that is in the real world, I'm not sure, but I'm really happy to kind of run with the biomass vibes here, especially with the uh, ultimate recycling plant in here. Uh, we will have Little Gander at its numbers. Uh, it's currently got 16,000 in garbage reserves. And it's producing a massive 1 megawatt <laughs> in, in power. So um, it's, it's, it's pretty okay. I think we could probably do with removing more garbage processing, I think, from the city. But we'll probably save that for our redevelopment episodes. Like I said, we'll probably do something with this space here now we remove that water treatment. Uh, not water treatment, the um, waste processing complex from Sunset Harbour. Uh, this way maybe some um new apartments to replace that maybe near the fishing marina might, might be quite trendy in the monorail so we'll get have a look at that at some point but uh likewise across the city we can probably remove more garbage processing that also helps saving our budget as well and then more parking over here with those japanese car parks which i think are much suited for industrial spaces especially when you kind of sat here looking at the grander facility so really happy with that uh, and then we got lots of rock lining and overgrowth near our outflow pumps that feed treated water back into the rivers to go out to the sea and beyond with lots of different rock walls and even kept in these roads as well found them quite nice borders for each section of it so i'm happy to keep those in of course and then all of our warehouses now have filled up with materials which you can definitely kind of envision are essentially spare parts or just storage units for an industrial complex and facility like this so pretty happy with how that turned out as well and the whole facility sits quite nicely uh, as part of Greater Denise as a bit of an industrial, I guess it's a work hotspot, isn't it, for people that live here. Definitely get a job down at the wastewater treatment biomass plant. But otherwise, that is going to do it for today. Let's thank you all so much for watching. This is the last of Orchid Bay's service industries. Of course, we've done the power plant now. We've done the mass garbage processing, and we've now got kind of a garbage processing fused in with a water treatment plant as well. So we shouldn't need to place any more services for Orchid Bay because the city isn't going to grow that much to the point it's going to need more with the amount of nodes we have left. And you guys have been really enjoying the redevelopment episodes, so we'll certainly do those just to keep the series going a little bit longer because those nodes are starting to dwindle a little bit now. 
but redevelopment does allow us to repurpose already nodes that have been accounted for. So look forward to some more redevelopment episodes in the future as well. If you are enjoying the content on the channel at any point, maybe consider supporting the Overcharged Egg Patreon. There are links down below where there's podcasts, early access, previews and polls and whatnot, and a nice little community to get involved with as well, should you want a little bit more out of the channel. But I'll shut up and leave it there. Please do enjoy the cinematics, but I'd like to thank you all so much again for watching. And as always, enjoy the rest of your day.